All right, in this tutorial, we'll be adding in the piers and abutments for this bridge. Just continuing from where we left off. So to add in the pier, you just come up here to the substructure and click on the place pier. Um, it gives you nice instructions right here at the cursor. It just in the blue text it says to select the support line to that. You just data point on to select it, and you can do the same thing to remove it. And then you just reset, which is right clicked and. Um, so I'll just select this middle here, just so that's where we're putting the pier. In this box, I just need to select a few things just to make sure they're all right. Um, first, you want to select the correct template. Um, and here, there's a pile bent and multi-column. Yes, and nice thing about these is it gives you a short preview of what it is here on the right. Um, and to select what best matches what I have, I will be coming down here to this wall pier, just because if we take a look at the bridge plans, it's just got this, well, like a wall with these H piles embedded in it. So in this template has the H piles and the wall. It also has this footing, which I don't need for what they did in the bridge plans, um, but I will just zero the dimensions out to kind of remove it. So I'll select that. And then you just check these other things. I want to be able to edit the elevation constraints, so I select that. I apply skew to solids. I selected that because there is a skew applied here to this cap. Um, Substructure concrete is already selected. And pile material, um, if you haven't selected before, you might need to select it. I'm having a steel H pile section. And the exact section that's called out in the plans isn't here, so I'm just selecting what's closest, and I will select the exact size in the next step. So once that's all good, I have it selected, just right click to reset, and data point, which is left click to accept that yes, I do want to add the elevations. So here in the, when you add the elevations, at first you work with the cap. So there's a vertical offset and absolute elevation you can type in. Um, I'm just gonna do zero, so it's zero offset from this working point elevation, which I believe is the bottom of the girders. Anyway, um, but for what I'm doing, setting that vertical offset to zero works just fine. And then you select the slope for the bottom and the top of the pier. Um, I can do, if there's parallel to deck or level, I'll do level. Um, in this case, it comes out exactly the same because it's, there's not a, there's no super elevation applied to the deck, so the deck's just level. And then we come over here to the footings. And from DTM, uh, that is just, it's an offset um, from the terrain that you enter in. And in this case, there's no train entered, so it's just assuming that this is at zero elevation. So this is just where to put the footing at. Um, in this case, I could strain or not constrain it. I can edit it later. Um, I'll just leave it as it is right there as the default and click OK. And then it adds that in, and I'm just going to push Escape to stop drawing. So now I need to come in here and edit it. So I can hover over it and come up to properties to edit. And then first I want to do substructure templates where I want to edit first. So just come up here to the three dots for that. And open that up. All right, and then there's the different properties. So first thing I'm going to change is this. I want to analyze it as a wall. So I'm just going to change that to a wall type. Uh, the type multi column is locked in place. That's based on the folder you pulled it from. So that's just going to be left as multi column. Cap. Cap is rectangular. And now we need to reference the bridge plans a bit just to get sure we make sure we get everything right. So cap length is. Oh, I should probably leave it on the screen. All right. So we have. 13.41 meters. And then the cap height, we have 600 millimeters. And the cap width is 1315. So 1315. Edge. You can apply filler or camphor to it, and we're not, it's just rectangular. So once that's all set in, go to the next one. 
we got columns. So the column is just the wall. Uh, it just models it. The input's just column. So, Tanger fill, it seems to fit just right what we're looking for. So now we just need to add in the information for that. Okay. Should drag this over a little more. Cool. I'll move that over there so you can just keep everything on the same screen. All right. So, what first thing it has is length. And length is like the, the height in this case, uh, just because remember, it's treating it as like as a column, so column length makes sense, but it's a wall, so you might, might be a little confusing, but um, so we'll just come over down here, and that height there is, let's see, so that'll be 5.595. And depth, in this case, is that width right there. I believe so. That'd be nine, five. Yep, that shrinks that up. And then column width would be its like its length along there. Um, and that would be twelve nine two five. All right, and that does the wall there. So it just matches up kind of with this. Um, oh, and fillet radius, we can adjust that. So it's fillet radius should be 458. Auto spacing. What the auto spacing does is if you have multi -col multiple columns, if you put auto spacing, it'll just space them all evenly. Um, we only got the one column though, because it's just a wall. All right, so once that's in place, move along to the footings. And the footing. Said we want to take isolated works just fine because what we're going to do is we're going to basically zero it out. Um, so I'll just put the same length in as the wall, which would be 12.925. Including height, I'm going to put that zero. Oops, not one, zero. Looks like it has to be at least one millimeter, but close enough to zero. And footing width will be 0 0.915. I basically just zeroes it all out so it just matches up to the wall. So it's not perfectly zero, but it's, it's close enough. One millimeter. Piles here. So it assigns the piles to the footing, which is why I couldn't just remove the footing. Um, there might be a way, but I'm not aware how to do that. Anyway, so under here under template, you guys just select the proper H piles, which uh, maybe I should not jump ahead. So on the previous, one second, going over here, just had to change the sheet on the drawings. So you've got HP and pile shall be HP 360 by 174. Um, and it's a little bit different because that would be, that's in metric, so you need to convert that to what it would be in uh, standard units because all the templates in here are based off the. I think the word term we're looking for is imperial. Um, so we gotta just look that up. And I have a handy little table to do that. All right, so we're doing 360 by 174. So we're looking for an HP 14 by 117. So you just come here to 14, 117. And I'll match that up. Um, pile length on the plans that is or at the pier so that's going to be 9.8 meters and the embedded length is I just got to change the page on the plans again embedded length is 5360 
All right. And right now, you can see the piles don't look quite right. Um, what we need to do is we need to come in here to the pattern layout, open up a new window, and we only want one row, but we have eight columns of piles. And then also, you need to set the margins. All right, so what we'll want to do is from the edge, so that's 775. So I want to change the left and right margin to 775. And top and bottom margin. Um, let's see, it's only 915 across, so that'd be yeah, closer to something like 450, top and bottom. And click generate piles. If you zoom in here, um, what basically um, margins do is it sets, sets this dashed line and it has to place the piles within this dashed line. So, and the edge of this dashed line is at the 775 and that's the center line that's next to your pile. So that's what we want. Um, and so that looks pretty good as far as I can tell. And you can double check the numbers to make sure they're entered incorrectly over he down here if you want. Um, And that looks all good, so I'll just click OK. It updates here. And the last thing we want to check is to make sure these piles are oriented correctly. And let's see, it's got the open side on the flat face. And it looks like it's right, so good. We could just leave the rotation at zero. And if, you, if you're going to do multiple of these, it's a good idea to add it to the library. You just click that button and you give it a name. And then you can just, it becomes a template, you can just drop in as many times as you need so you only need to create the pile uh, here once all right so once everything looks good i just click ok and updates here on this drawing there and it looks great see it's got that skew there which is all good perfect all right so and that is how we add the piers so next we'll move on to the abutments